This is Tomo News for Thursday, May 10th. Tony's not gonna like this. The armor from the first Iron Man movie has been stolen from an LA warehouse. It's a plot straight from Spider-Man Homecoming, and maybe just the kind of distraction we need from all the Infinity War feels. The $325,000 US dollar suit was being kept in a prop storage facility in Bacoima and likely got taken between February, when it was last seen, and April, when employees noticed it was gone. Seems like a job for the Avengers, but sadly, all we got is the LAPD. The guys in blue currently have no suspects, but thank God, Twitter does. Deadpool definitely has the balls to pull it off, but we doubt he'll be sneaky about it. Pepper, though, or even Robert Downey Jr. himself. Heck, it might turn out to be Vulture, or someone dressed like him. Wouldn't dismiss the Marvel nerds, either. Who knows, maybe one day someone will cosplay in the original armor and will be none the wiser. Whoever it was, mad props to you. Mom shaming now? Oh boy. A breastfeeding mom says she was humiliated by American Airlines employees after attempting to bring her breast pump on board. On May 6, Kelsey Myers was boarding a Chicago-bound flight at LAX when a gate agent stopped her and said she had to check in one of her bags. Myers claims she had a carry-on, a personal item, a small cooler of breast milk, and her breast pump. The airline allows each passenger to carry on one personal item and a bag, but according to their own policy, breast milk cooler bags and pumps don't count toward that limit. When Myers tried to explain this, the agent called a female supervisor, who reiterated that she needed to check her bag. The new mom said she had extra pump supplies in her carry-on and needed it with her, but was then chastised in front of 50 other passengers when the supervisor mockingly asked, how many boobs do you have? Myers eventually checked the bag to end the humiliating confrontation, but has since sent in a complaint to the airline about how she was treated. American Airlines contacted her to offer a weak sorry and a $75 voucher, which, that's it? But Meyer says it's not about the money. She wants a proper apology and for staff to be held accountable and trained so none of this ridiculousness happens again. Whether or not American Airlines is going to give her that remains to be seen. Do not use these. Earlier this week, Hawaii passed a bill to ban sunscreen containing the common chemicals oxybenzone and octinazate. The bill follows research suggesting sunscreen with such chemicals that don't stick to human skin can hurt coral. Oxybenzone and octinazate can cause genetic damage to coral and other organisms living in the ocean. However, mineral sunscreen that uses zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are still allowed as they block UV rays while remaining environmentally friendly. But how do you know what sunscreen is the mineral kind? Easy. Look for the labels that say naturally sourced and fragrance free and check the ingredients. In a response to the bill, Hawaii Senator Mike Gabbard said he believes Hawaii is doing the right thing by banning chemical-based sunscreen. He also added the bill will make a huge difference in protecting coral reefs, marine life, and human health. One step closer to the Jetsons. To make Uber's flying taxi service Uber Air a reality, it will need the landing pads that Uber is calling Skyports. At the ride-hailing company's second annual Elevate Summit in Los Angeles, Uber's partnering architecture and design firms showed their winning designs for what these skyports could look like. Designed by design and architecture firm Corgan, the idea is to make the platform easily adapt to its parts anywhere. The system has a skyport that could be added to open spaces like parking garages or the roof of skyscrapers. It is said that each skyport could carry 1,000 landings per hour. Also, Corgan imagines the system could also be used for events like concerts, art festivals, and gardens. Pickard Schulte and Arup took the idea to elevate with their design. It is said the design could be able to handle 180 landings and takeoffs per hour per module. Boca Powell's approach is said to be able to accommodate 1,000 VTOLs and a landing and takeoff in three minutes. The facility is said to be able to adjust for wind change. Gannett Fleming's design could support up to 52 eVTOLs per hour per module, and it hopes to facilitate more than 600 vehicles and 4,000 people per hour by 2028. The Beehive design from Humphreys & Partners would be able to handle 900 passengers per level an hour. The Beck Group's design concept could be able to accommodate 150 takeoffs and landings per hour and can be scaled up to 1,000 trips per hour. Well, Tomo Sapiens, which one is your favorite? Wow, launching mobile apps. Have you got Steam on your home computer with dozens of games? Well, from May 21st, you'll be able to play them around your house via your Android or Apple device. On that day, Valve, creators of Steam, will launch Steam Link. 
Provided you're connected to the same network as your Steam Library mainstay computer, this app, CNET Reports, will let you access your games on other devices around the house. To stream Steam Bot games, users will need a 5 GHz Wi-Fi network or a hardwired connection to the host computer. But it's not just video games valves into streaming. Ars Technica reports the company is also launching a mobile streaming app dubbed Steam Video. That'll let users watch shows and movies bought on Steam on their mobile device.